Yo, what's up, y'all? We out here yet again. It's the Buff Missionary. I'm back with another video. This one's a little bit different. I'm going to talk about my experience out in these trails and out in these streets running. But before we get to that, like, subscribe, share, hit the bell, all that cool stuff so you don't miss any new updates, any videos. We following the training journey out here and we getting ready for some big stuff. So let me tell you about it. I've had to get back into running training. Typically, I will say I'm not a big fan of running, but you got to do what you got to do. I am training in particular for a marathon. All right, first marathon ever run. It's happening in November, the Bank of America 2023 Chicago Marathon. And uh, it's kind of exciting. Never ran a distance like this before, but it's gonna be cool. Down in November, all right? So I got a few months to train and we're out here in the streets, in the trails a couple times every week so I can get in shape and get my cardio up because let's be honest, out here in Michigan, it's cold most of the year. Ain't nobody out here trying to run in the snow and freezing and sub-zero tundra and all this stuff that's going on but what that means is you get to put you got to put in more work when the summer comes and the sun gets out and i say summer lightly because you know it's, it's still like 50 degrees so um summer yeah but that's not all we're working on see i got the marathon but then i have a spartan soliloquy of events that I'm trying to do. Oh boy, a couple weekends from now, I got a trifecta weekend. Shoot, last year I did two trifectas, the one in Sparta and a couple other races to get it done, to get two trifectas in total. This year I'm going for four. Four trifecta weekends is the goal and one ultra race. Now, a Spartan ultra is a marathon length Spartan. So I'm not just doing one marathon this year, I'm gonna be doing two. We're trying to add to this collection in the back. You know what I'm saying? It's looking kind of slim. It's not enough, I need more. I'm trying to triple that this year. Generally speaking, like I said, I'm not really a fan of running, but something I do love about it is you get to really be in the zone with your mind. It's just you out there with your thoughts. If you're having a bad day, it's a good idea to go take a run. If you're having a good day, better be out there and get that run while you're feeling good. And I wanna share with you lessons that I think I'm learning from running that I can apply to regular life. Check this out. Lesson number one, don't just think macro, get micro, all right? Don't just stay big picture. Narrow it down and think about the small stuff too. Now, when you're running, you want to have your main goal in mind. Whatever it is for the day, if it's running 20 minutes, you wanna have that. If it's going for 10 miles, you wanna have that for sure. But you don't just wanna think about that only because as you tend to run, if all you're thinking about is 10 miles, man, 10 miles, 10 miles, you can wear yourself out thinking about that goal and where you are and, and how far you are from it. The thing to keep in mind about running is it's literally a step-by-step -step process. When you run, you have to keep your eyes and your mind on the steps that you need to take, whether it's half a mile first to lead up to a mile, to two miles, to three miles, and so on. You wanna keep in mind the checkpoints and the steps along the way towards that big goal. Don't just think about the big goal, get micro, think about the details and what it's gonna take every step along the way to succeed. In running, this has very practical application because if you don't look down at where you're running, you're bound to trip over something, especially running in the trail. In the road, sure, it can happen as well. I can tell you from experience, you wanna be looking down and watching every step that you're taking so that way you can avoid tripping on roots, turning an ankle in a in a divot in the ground, whatever it might be. Sometimes there might be bikers out there on the trails too. So you want, definitely wanna make sure you're paying attention to every step you're taking so you're not running into someone out there. Don't just think macro, give micro. Lesson number two, just because you slow down, doesn't mean that you're failing. Obviously, if you're out here running, going in the flat is okay. Going downhill has its moments, but going uphill is the hard one. That's what everybody hates. That's where you get the most gassed. We got a dairy hill out here, and it's like the slightest of a slope, but it always takes it out of me every single time that I do it. It's more physically demanding. It takes more out of your quads. You feel, you feel that lactic acid build up real quick. It takes more effort going through the uphill. And it's very similar to in life. When you're going through hard times or tougher times, those are the moments that demand more of you, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, whatever it might be. Those are the times that require more of you to get the job done. And guess what? You're not gonna be able to keep the same pace that you were running in the flat. But just because you slow down while you're going through the hard time, it doesn't mean that you're failing. And even if you pause and stop to take a break, you can still regroup, catch your breath, and keep on pushing. Just because you slow down doesn't mean 
that you're failing. You're taking three, lesson number three. So the opposite of going uphill is going downhill, but this is often what everybody loves more than anything else. Why? Because you get going down, you start catching up momentum, and man, you're just flying. I remember <laughs> growing up, we used to go to this place called Stone Mountain in Georgia, and we would climb up on this big rock, and going uphill was tough, and we'd be pausing and, and struggling to catch our breath, get to the top, amazing view, and then it was time to come down. Oh my goodness, so much fun. We'd be running, jumping off of trees, jumping off of rocks, and just flying down the trail, trying to miss people. <laughs> as they're walking up and trying to miss people as they're going down to have no idea don't even see us coming but man such a grand time but it can also be a little dangerous i don't know about you but the only times that i've ever tripped while running has been going downhill yeah running down stone mountain i've definitely had a couple really big wipeouts and some of my worst ankle turns you know if i think about it i don't think i've ever tripped going upstairs like Joe Biden. I mean uphill. The interesting thing is a lot of times it takes more intention and focus, physical demand to go uphill. But the thing is we still have to have that same intention going downhill. Don't be fooled. Just because you feel like you got the wind behind you, you feel like you can fly, you feel like you're just going down as fast as possible, don't be fooled. You still need just as much intention and focus and, and being locked in as you do when you're taking those hard steps going uphill. If you forget about your effort and your level of control and your intention with each step that you take, oh man, you might be in for a big fall. Unless you're our guy Joe Biden, you probably will have a worse wipeout going downhill with momentum than you were going slow going uphill. You definitely want to be excited and grateful. You all know how it is if you're out here running. You go through that uphill and it's tough and you start to level out, you start to catch your breath a little bit more and you get that little downhill and you're like, yes, finally. Enjoy that. Be excited for that. But don't let your mind step away from the control, the effort, and the discipline, the intention that you put into each step that you take. Keep your eyes on the path, keep your eyes on your steps, and make sure that you can keep advancing towards your goal and without that big wipeout. Going back to the life analogy, right? We can build momentum and work so hard to build up momentum in that time where it's like we're going uphill slow, steady, trying to win that race, and then things start to add up. And it's like a snowball effect where things just start going in our favor and it's just, everything's happening so fast and we're moving, we're, we're making so much progress where, you know, it's like an exponential effect, but we tend to forget about the steps that got us there. We stop doing the steps that got us there. And when we lose that level of intention, when we lose the discipline that we've had to that point, we can set ourselves up for a big failure. And just like with running, if you do happen to trip going upstairs, it's not that bad because think about it. As far as an angle is concerned, you have less to fall because you're already going uphill, right? But if you flip that and you're going downhill, <laughs> if you fall this way, you got a lot further to fall. So you need to have more intention, you need to have more control, and you need to have more discipline as you build up momentum in whatever it is that you're doing because the fall can be greater. Don't be fooled, don't be fooled. All right, I don't know if I said three points at the beginning. I originally thought that I was only gonna have three points, but here's a bonus one, all right? Number four, adaptable is more sustainable. I used to treat my distance running like this. Choose a goal, whether it was a time or a distance, and I would say, this is how far I'm going today, but here's what I'll do. If I want to run for 20 minutes, I'll run 10 minutes in this direction, and I'll turn around and run 10 minutes back. Or if I'm trying to get 10 miles in today, I'll choose a straight road, and I'll try to find a path that just goes straight from right here to five miles down this road and turn around and come back. And it's kind of effective because if you go 10 minutes out this way, if you wanna get home, you gotta do the 10 minutes to get back. If you ran five miles out over there, you have to turn around and walk or run <laughs> the five miles if you wanna get back home. So it can be effective. But when I compare it to some of what I've experienced this past couple weeks in running, it's actually kind of boring and uninspiring, demotivating. Yeah. It's too regimented. It's too predictable. There's no variation. There's no adventure with that. There's nothing really to look forward to because I'm making the journey so plain. So these last couple weeks in running, I've been doing something a little bit different. We ended up running down this street and turning to go this way and we ran down the dairy hill and back out of the farm and around a little bit of the field and turned around and came back and then we went to the right this way and, and turned left and then we went over here towards the pathfinder hill and the tubing hill and then we would come back and up the dairy hill and run around some of the different areas of campus and it it was a little confusing but 
I actually enjoyed it more. In the last trail run that I did, ran around the trails a little bit, went some places I had never gone before, ran around a big field and ran around another one because I found this random path. I said, why not? Let's, let's take it and see how far it goes. Came back, went up the dairy hill, started running around campus. I, <laughs> I found something really interesting because my goal was six miles. Came back and I was at six and a half. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go for seven. Running through campus and I started to notice all these barriers up on different sidewalks. So I would turn down one and oh shoot, this one's blocked off. So it was almost like I made a game of it, right? I'd turn around and come back and see what's the next path that I could take to try to get the direction and the distance in that I wanted to achieve for the day. I had no idea that there were all these construction projects going on on all these sidewalks. So it made it even more unpredictable where I was going to go and how I was gonna to get to my goal. But regardless of how many barriers were up, it didn't matter whether I went down a sidewalk and couldn't get all the way across because there was a barrier or if I happened to turn on one that didn't have one and it was clear and I could go. It didn't matter because eventually, as long as I kept on moving, regardless of how many different turns and unexpected turns I had to take, I eventually accomplished my goal of getting to seven miles. You know, I think sometimes we treat our goals and ambitions and our dreams in life like that straight line path, right? It's just, I'm right here and that thing is, is right over there. And I see that and I think, you know what? This is the, the straightest line. That's, that's gonna be the quickest way to get there. It's gonna be the most efficient way to get there. But we really have no idea what that even is going to look like. When in our minds, the path is starting to veer off differently than what we think that perfect straight line path should be, we can get bored out of running towards that goal. And if we feel like we're continuing to pursue it and not really making much progress and it's boring, we might bore ourselves out of the goal. I have found that when it comes to the different goals that I set in my life, sure, I might think that there's a certain path I wanna to take to get there. Sure, I might think that there's an ideal set of decisions that I should make and steps I should take to get there but it doesn't always work that way. And guess what? It's okay to be adaptable and to go down different paths. There's not gonna be a perfect straight line to every path, every goal and dream and ambition that you have in your life. You're gonna go down some paths and find it, oh shoot, there's a barrier here. I can't go this way right now. It doesn't mean you fail. Keep running, reverse out of that path, choose another one and keep moving. Eventually you'll reach your goal. You'll find a path that's open that will help you and allow you to get to your goal. I think sometimes we look at the barriers in our paths as no, you can't do this. No, you need to stop doing this. Oh, you're a failure. But those barriers aren't going to be up there always. It's construction. So those paths are being built. They're just not ready to be taken yet. So maybe we can think about barriers more as an indicator that this is not the path I need to take at this time. And I need to choose a different path to take at this time. But in the future, maybe I can go back to that same path and find out that construction is progressed enough that I can use that path to get to my goal or even to another goal for that matter. Timing is everything. And I can't emphasize enough that just because there's a barrier in your path, a barrier is not a denial of a goal. A barrier in the path of your goal is not a denial of the goal. Keep working towards those goals. Find another way and you'll get there. Don't give up and keep grinding. So that's my four lessons from running. <laughs> I'll probably think of some more as I keep on running this week. Got seven miles on the road coming up in a couple days. But yo, it's a Buff Missionary. Like, subscribe, and share. Write your comments below. If you're out here running, what do you think about when you run? What are you learning from your running experience? Let me know in the comments and I'll catch y'all in the next one, all right? We out here and we out. Peace!